Uh, okay, so we've got this sort of complicated uh, multivariable version of the second derivative test. I just want to go through all the parts and pieces of that and show what that looks like. So uh, the second derivative test classifies uh, concave up or concave down. So all right. So we are at a critical point. where our gradient is zero, right? So no slope in the x direction, no slope in the y direction. No rush, please. Proceed calmly, it's okay. We're just getting started, it's okay. Um, so given a critical point, we want to determine if it's uh, concave up or concave down. Right? We want to see if it's cup-shaped or cap-shaped. Okay, so <laughs> right, whether our graph is <coughs> concave up, which corresponds to a min. Concave down, which corresponds to a max. Um, yes. And then in two dimensions, we've got this, this kind of third situation that can come up where we are a saddle point. So we'll get into that. So the main player in this thing is the Hessian matrix. So we calculate that Hessian, and then we've got sort of uh, three things that can happen. So so. If that determinant uh, is negative, then we are a saddle. Okay. If that determinant is positive and the second derivative in x is positive, then we are a min. Right? The, the picture there is that you've got this, this cup shaped thing, you're concave up, you're like a cup, and the determinant doesn't tell you whether you're a min or you're a max. So you cut along the x-axis, and when you cut along the x-axis, you see something that's concave up. Then you know that you're a min. picture here is your second derivative is positive, but you cut and you see something that is concave down. So you see something concave down and you conclude that you are a max. 
There was a cool question that came up. Oh, that alliterates really well. Cool question came up. Um, can you replace these with FYYs? Right? So in this test, you can replace these guys with FYYs. Corresponds to cutting in a different direction, but the same principle holds. Okay, so these can be XX or YY. Um, and then there's this last case. If any of these three things do not work, You have no idea. Yeah. No conclusion. Um, yeah, so if any of these are equalities, if any of these things equal to zero, you're in case four. No clue. Yeah, okay, so that's the statement of the thing. Are there questions about the statement? So I want to try out um, applying this to some function. Hopefully we can get some kind of nice conclusion here. Um, and then we'll, 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 do a, we'll do a case that winds up in, in case four. So we'll do something where we get a positive conclusion and then something that takes us into uh, case four. Okay. So, Classify the critical points of e to the x squared plus y squared. Okay, so our first move is to, actually wait, sorry, I guess our first move is to find the critical points. Take the derivative in x, that causes some chain rule stuff to happen. We get 2x equals the x. Now this e to the stuff, this will never give us zero. Right? E will never output zero. So we know that this guy has to be the one contributing the zero. Same thing here. Okay, so x is zero. So we have a unique critical point at the origin. Right, I guess I should say what we mean by classify. We mean classify as min, max, saddle, that kind of thing. Say what shape it is. So we, 
We want to classify this guy, so we need a Hessian. So to get the Hessian, we can take our answer for the derivative in x and take its derivative again. So we get, the, we get an addition there because there's a product little thing going on. So we get 2 e to the x squared plus y squared, and then this guy times the derivative of this guy. Okay. Now we take the derivative of this guy with respect to x. Right? So we've got derivative in y, we want x, y. Think through this. We have the derivative in y, we want the derivative of y, x. So we take the derivative of this thing with respect to x. There's supposed to be a little bit of a gap here, right? These aren't a product. These are two entries in a matrix. Okay. Now, Clairaut's theorem tells us that we can switch the order here. And now we take the derivative of this thing in y. So the y, y derivative. notation. Um. Now we take a determinant. Yeah, now we take a determinant. <laughs> <laughs> yes, determinants. Um. Right, so if we took the determinant at this stage, it'd be really messy, right? There'd be all sorts of stuff getting multiplied together to be a disaster. So pro tip, okay? We, we can, we only care about what's going on at this point here. So we should evaluate our determinant only at that one point. Okay, so we put in zeros. Okay, that makes this term go away, this term go away. This term go away. Nice. So now we plug in zeros here. We get 2e to the 0. Okay, 
And this is something we can take a determinant of. Okay, we get the determinant four uh, f x x is positive. Kind of reasonable, right? We've got this thing. Um, it's e to a paraboloid. Oh yes, question. So then, if, if uh, they're both negative twos, that would make it a uh, maximum. Perfect. Yes, perfect. Yes, if, was, if there were negative twos, then it would be a maximum. Yeah. Um, just one. Just to finish the sentence I was saying there. Um, this is e to a parabola. We minimize the parabola, we minimize the function. Right? So this should be minimized at zero, zero. So this, this seems to jive with our intuition. Um, I want to show us, I want to show y'all a case where we can get into um, the, the, the test being inconclusive, where there is no conclusion. So this is going to be a case where things go slightly weird. 